It says in verse 1, look at it again. It says, now I say that the heir, somebody say the inheritor, the heir, as long as he is a child, as long as he, as long as he, as long as he is still unaware of who he is, he is no different than the servant, though he be what? Lord of all. Lord of all. How many people know that you literally have been made a king and a priest by God? Who knows that you're a son? Who knows that you're a son? And some of y'all say, man, but how you talk and how you do things is not always reflective of it. I ain't got nobody here. <laughs> Let, let something happen to, see, when you know who you are, immediately you put a demand on God. Yes, yes. Why? And because you know as an inheritor you have a right to it. In other words, I have a right to healing. I have a, y'all ain't going to help me in here. And, and, and it's important to know who I am. Amen. Watch this. Turn to somebody and say, in Christ, in Christ. I have no deficiencies. But you have to accept that as the absolute truth. And, and, and here's the problem. Touch your neighbor and say, you need to be emancipated. You need to be emancipated. You need to be free and released from the bondage of that whole mindset. That whole mindset is killing you. And most of the way you think, as much as you want to blame it on environment outwardly, it is the one you've created inwardly. See, your outward environment, honestly, in initially when you're born, you can't do nothing about it. Just like this young man. He's an heir. He doesn't know who he is. He's in an environment. Most of his life when he's a kid, guess who takes care of him? Slaves. When, when you are a king or a queen and you're a prince or a princess, and the, the people that take care of you are paupers and slaves. There are people who don't share in the inheritance. But what will happen is if you are not taught by governors and tutors and administrators who you are, you will actually think that life is cool living like the person that's serving you. Go to Ephesians 2 and 20. What, watch this. For we are his workmanship created in what? Christ. Here you go right here. That's in who? That's, it's, it's talking about your identity. Yeah. In Christ. For we are his what? Come on, y'all. Created in who? In Christ under what? Good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Put this up in the uh, New Living Translation. This is my favorite right here. Yeah. For we are God's what? Yeah. Woo! He has created us anew where? In Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us what? Long ago. Long ago, this thing was put, already done. Love it. There you go. Already done. And then he says, you're God's masterpiece. Now, what is a masterpiece? The dictionary defines a masterpiece as a person's greatest work of art. The consummate example of skill or you are God's what? you his greatest work of art. Man, I, that, do you, you are a masterpiece. Not just that your value is great, you're priceless. And the reason why your value is so high is because you are an original. Man, when people collect art, they don't want no copy. They want the original. And the original Picasso going to cost some money. Right? The, the original Norman Rockwell painting is going to cost some money. You can go in Wegmans and they got a ton of Norman Rockwell pictures up. They copies. Because the original is priceless. You can't find another Rodney. What'd you say? See, I like what you And you can't find another what? You should have said your name. But see, you don't understand. You're a masterpiece. You're an original. You're priceless. Your value. Y'all ain't going to help me. It's undescribable. Can't nobody afford the real you. That's why when you really discover who you are, you'll look back and say, man, I let anybody just handle me, but not no more. And the only person that's worthy of handling me is the person that made me a masterpiece. Listen, listen, I want you to think about this. Picasso, Da Vinci, 
uh, 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 Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, all these different people who have done works that are considered to be masterpieces. Didn't they become masterpieces after they died? Yeah. Well, after Christ died, you became a... Your value shot up. Your worth shot Let me get you out of here. Anybody here? Somebody say, I'm a masterpiece. I'm a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. I got to do this. Are you here? Somebody say, my value don't shot up. Here, here's the problem. Here's the problem. You are a masterpiece irregardless of the fact whether you acknowledge it or not. And the reason why you haven't accepted that you're a masterpiece is because you haven't died to you. You're going to have to die to you to see your value. I'm crucified with Christ, not I. Okay, no, let me leave you. Are you here? Somebody say, I got to die, die. I'm crucified with Christ in the Galatians 22 and 20. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Identity and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. He died to increase your value. You got to die to see your worth, to see your value. I am a masterpiece. I'm the best that there is at being Rodney Roberts. And if I do what I do and how I do it and I go ahead and accept the original that I am, I'll live a full life because I won't live my life trying to be somebody else. 